Hi, this is Thunder Yee from Waterwork.com and welcome to our full review of the LG Nitro HD. The Nitro HD is the first 4G LTE device on AT&T that sports a 720p display. Yes, that's right. The display screen is a HD display, so it's a high def display at 720p. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the whole device overall. Now you've got that 4.5 inch 720p display, as you, know, you can see it here, it's sharp. And, uh, Pretty much sexy. Uh, you also have a front-facing camera, which is one megapixel, but it records. You can record at 720p. Also, that's the resolution for the front-facing camera. And I'll show you in the review. Um, you've got touch sensitive buttons here at the bottom, but you can see the only three buttons: back, a home, and a menu slash search. To use it, to, to use that, just the search. You have to basically hold that down. On the top, you do have your port for your micro USB, uh, your 3.5 mm jack, and your power button are right there. On this side here, the right, there's nothing. On the left hand side, you do have your volume rockers. And at the back, it sports an 8 megapixel camera uh, that records a 1080p uh, with um, LED flash. Now, if you open this up here, just do this, reveals our SIM card slot. And we also, it still comes with 16 gigabytes of storage. Just slide that out, show you right there 16. Slide this back in, and the battery is an 1830 milliamp battery, which is pretty much what you expect in our days with 4G LTE devices. You need to have bigger batteries. Um, so yeah, we'll, what we'll do is we'll take some time, we'll jump in, and let's show you some more about the Nitro HD. All right, so this is the Nitro HD. Um, you can see how smooth um, it flows through. This is running Android 2.3, I believe 2.3.4. Let's go ahead and just take a look at that quickly first. Um, with over with uh, LG's own UI, personal UI on top of this, it's so 2.3.5 actually. So um, it is smooth. It, it does run pretty smoothly. Sort of got a dual core processor and um, pretty zippy there. Now um, LG's own UI interface is, um, has a couple additives here that um, you know give you a different feel on how this device works. So if you go into the application here, you can of course pinch zoom to close it down or maximize. Uh, it's very simple. You do have a couple of um, programs here that are installed by AT&T, like the AT&T Code, AT&T Family Map, so on and so forth. Um, you also have Smart Share, which, uh, which is very nice, which LG is now bundled with all their, all their devices. This is a DLNA capable device, and we'll get to, to that. Uh, what this allows you to do is connect to some, your home network. So for instance, I go to settings, turn on Wi-Fi here, let's head back. So yeah, this is my network, my ditto, which we know we've reviewed in the past. Um, go, to, go to videos here. Let's pick a movie that we can definitely check out. So we'll pick, uh, let's go to the comic book movie. So what do we have here? Now you can see it's pretty smooth, especially just picking stuff up from your network without uh, much, uh, you could say, complaints or stress, if you will. Go here, loading content, we pick 300. Play the movie. Now this is streaming off your network on the device, so I can jump over and because I jump too fast. But you can see there, look you see how clear this is this is one of the benefits of having that 720p display is how vibrant movies look like. I'm just gonna bring this up closer for you guys. So you can hear the volume there. It's 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 rich, clear sound, and also you can see just looking at the movie, you can see how clear and vibrant it is. So that 720p display does a lot to giving you a good viewing experience for movies. Uh, it's something that uh, you will definitely enjoy if you're watching movies on the go with this device. Um, so that's that's something uh, just to take note there. Um, going back to the applications here, they also have a Wi-Fi share. So of course you can tether devices to your Nitro HD, but also be besides tethering, you can actually share devices. So basically, you can create a Wi-Fi network to share device to, to share um, images, videos, and music with other devices. So I can go in here, have images and videos. So for instance, I can add a video from video I uh, recorded. I can add so add that video, 
and if someone connects to my Wi-Fi hotspot, I can now, if it's a friend of mine, I can share that video with them. So it's something to note and something you can do in, if you go into the settings here, you set up a password and all that kind of fun stuff. So that is something very nice to have within the uh, framework of the system. Now, of course, um, you know, with the, the UI here, it's also, uh, there's some things that are, uh, you know, different, if you will. For instance, if you hold down the uh, the home page to add widgets, it actually pops up and you can slide through the different widgets. Same thing with your shortcuts, your folders, as well as the wallpapers. So this gives you like a on-the-spot view of what to select and you don't have to jump out of the page or jump somewhere else before you add a new widget wallpaper or shortcut uh, to your, um, you know, to your home screen. <clears throat> All right, so let's check out the uh, the camera. So you've seen our our 1080p recording of the uh, camera. Um, one thing about the camera is, again, you know, even taking pictures with it, the pictures look great looking on the screen. So I'll show you some pictures here, which, you know, you can see just looking at them on screen looks looks very good. The, the screen itself does a lot to uh, giving you a, a good, just a good view of what you're looking at. And that's something to take note. It's very nice. It's very nice that you you have, you know, this option. So going back to the camera software itself, sorry about that. Um, you can see here, of course, you have the option of switching to the front-facing camera. Now I mentioned the front-facing camera. I can see that there. See how clear that is. Uh, if you go into settings, you can see the it's a one megapixel camera, but you can see wide wide screen is 720 and um, of course, then you have a 960. So that is the resolution of the camera itself. Now, if we head back and switch back over to the rear camera, you have a camera settings, which you have kind of like a scrolling setting options where you can keep moving down. You can see the image size, eight megapixels, but uh, widescreen, of course, is at six. You have your screen modes, you have your ISOs, which is up to 400, your white balance. Uh, of course, you have color effects, which you can add to it just a little. Uh, timer and your different shot modes. So you do have continuous and panorama, which of course gives you that whole panned out view and look there. So you know that's um, I keep hitting the wrong buttons. This 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 can be a little bit confusing there, if you will. So of course you have your zoom, you have of course your exposure, and of course your flash there, and you can easily toggle to uh, video camera mode. So that's that's how the app looks like, uh, the camera app, app there. So as I mentioned, um, to use search, you just basically have to hold it down, and that brings up Google Search. And you know that's something you can either do or so. Which pretty much the uh, LG has said uh, they don't really need a fourth button up there. So just to so let anyone know who's going to be purchasing the device, your search is, the, is there, but you do have to kind of you just have to hold down the menu button to get that option up there. Now, when it comes to um, battery life, uh, battery life for this device is okay. It's not um, it's not that great. I would say I'll get about eight to ten hours or so with the uh, Nitro HD. Um, opening applications and system management it's, it's all right um, I would say um, I expect it better especially with the dual core processor um, all, the good thing about it though is that you can especially when managing applications you can actually um, uninstall um, stock applications in here so you have applications running uh, downloaded or all and I can go to say the AT&T app here and I can uninstall it, so I can install all you know, all preloaded applications on here, which is pretty cool and it's very, it's very nice. So, so I'm sure you all want to see. So people are going to look at the 720p display. How does it compare to say the Galaxy S2 with Super AMOLED? So I'm going to crank. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put this on. I'm going to turn that off to the lowest. I'll put it automatic. I have a Galaxy S2 here. And okay, you can see this. This so that's the lowest there. So Galaxy S2. I'm gonna turn off the brightness completely. You can see the brightness off. Oh, this is an automatic. I apologize. Um, if you're on the lowest setting and this is off, you can see where the brightness levels are between the two devices. Now, if I crank this up to the highest, and uh, so one second, I crank this up to the highest. You can see uh, there. I mean. There are differences, and uh, you can see this looks very sharp, and that's something Super AMOLED does. But also, this also gives you a very, uh, 
you'd say very uh, clear outlook. So this is something I would say you can judge for yourself and say how does it look and how does it can play. But I can tell you very much when you're watching videos and watching movies, definitely 720p uh, display wins out all the time. It's something at AMOLED, you can see the pixelation of AMOLED on the 720p display. It's very clear, crisp, and clean. So just give me a quick comparison there so you guys can see. Uh, the device itself is pretty light for LTE device compared to say the um, the uh, this is the Vivid. The Vivid is actually quite heavy and it's also thicker. You can see comparison size wise with Vivid. This actually feels very light. Design wise, it's got this mesh, this grip. Uh, it's a very plain design for an LG device. So it's something that on the top it feels a little plasticky here, which I wish they had changed it to, to something more polished finish. But I do like the back grip and I lo do like the, the, the fact that it's pretty much a very light device overall. So that's pretty much it for our review for the LG Nitro HD. Uh, oh, one more thing I forgot to mention um, Speed Test. It's a 4G device. So I'm just going to run one quick speed test for you here. You guys can take a look and I'll show you some of the results I've had with the device in the past. So right now I'm doing about 20 or so and um, that's for download speeds and uploads, um, low uploads uh, at four. Now that's comparable to the, uh, the uh, Vivid which uh, I uh, also got something similar, but I've also gotten varying speeds on this device. You can see I've gotten 41 megabits per second, which is probably the highest I've gotten from any LTE device pre uh, at any time, and 35. But I can I will let you know those times are run at night around 1, 2 a.m. in the morning. So, of course, you probably will notice a difference there. Actually, 48 is the highest I've gotten um, from an LTE device. So, you can see, and it's clear, it, it works well LTE within your region and area if you have LTE. So, just take note of that. So, anyway. Like I mentioned, if you guys have any questions, any comments about the Nitro HD, let us know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our pages on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. We have the links below. And also Google+, Plus. you can also check us out there. So, this is Thundee from Borog saying thank you, and always enjoy entertainment.